Hi all, this is the video about airlocks. Uh, I'm making this video because one of the comments I got over and over again on my other videos was thanks for showing me how to deal with the airlock. And that surprised me because there's other videos and much longer videos not about the airlock and there's a lot of other content there. So I said if people keep commenting about the airlock then maybe we ought to make a video airlock that's just about airlocks. Dropping. Put all the airlock knowledge I have here in one short easy to access video versus having to search through the rest of uh, everything I recorded. So the first tip comes in here. Um, you'll notice I come into this main cabin and it's pressurized, so if you're like me, the first thing I do is depressurize it. And now the cabin is unpressurized, but this airlock, the inner between the space between the inner and outer airlock doors is actually still pressurized. And in fact, if you hover over this door long enough, you'll get the danger indicator there. Um, so after you unpressurize this inner cabin, you want to hit this airlock air control level again. Dropping. That will depressurize the airlock, and in fact, because the inner and outer spaces are both unpressurized, it will just open up both airlock doors, and this makes it easy to get in or out while you're working in there. It also makes it so that when we cut into this airlock, it won't depressurize on us and that can be very dangerous if this inner airlock space is pressurized when you cut into it as we'll be doing in a second um, then uh, then it will um, it can explode and like take out half the ship which clearly we don't want that's tip number one is make sure you cycle that airlock door one more time to open it all up and make sure it's unpressurized before you start cutting now, tip number two is how do you deal with the airlock? And when I say deal with the airlock, what do I really mean? Because the airlock's not like the other fixtures of the ship, where here this is, you know, the console, and I can pull it off and just shoot it down to the barge. What I really mean when I say deal with the airlock uh, is the fact that this outer panel here is nanocarbon. The outer hull here is nanocarbon, and the inner hull is aluminum, and the four panels that make up the ceiling and the floor and the sides of the airlock, those are all aluminum as well. So when I say deal with the airlock, I want to separate the outer nanocarbon panel, both on the outer wall as well as the ceiling and the floor, then those to the processor and keep the rest of this here, the aluminum, to go into the furnace. So uh, you could just get out the split saw, you could line up, uh, you know, four precise cuts and you can do that and it works just fine to start uh, but my experience is that oftentimes you have to do a little bit more work inside the wall anyway so uh, I'm gonna show you how I like to deal with the airlock just as a part of processing the rest of the ship where I think it's a little bit easier and faster to do it than doing it from inside the airlock itself at some point you're gonna get access to this inner wall uh, to the space inside uh, to the space inside the crawl space between the inner and outer hull. Uh, for some of the other mackerels, you have to come back here and hit a fuel uh, cutoff switch. Uh, or even if you don't, at some point you're going to separate this rear end so you can get the thruster out of there um, and send the rear end to the processor. And it, it, you know, whatever the circumstances, eventually you get access to this inner space between the inner and outer hull, which is called the crawl space, and this is where I like to deal with the airlock. And the way that I do this is I get my split saw out, and then I line myself up real real precise so I have a nice 90 degree angle, a nice perpendicular angle to this airlock wall. You double again, check again, double it again, double check that it's depressurized already so you don't cause an explosion. Um, and this split saw has enough force in it that if you just fire right now, it'll push you around and it makes it hard to, to do really precise cuts. So what I like to do is hold down the brake key, which by default for me is control. Um, and if you hold on the brake key, then you can make really precise cuts with this split saw. So I fire it, and you'll notice now that my aiming reticle is in the exact same spot uh, as it was before I fired. So I can just hit that twice real quick in succession and I made a perfectly lined up cut between the inner and outer, between this, this wall in the foreground and the wall in the background. And I keep holding down that break and I go up and I hit the ceiling as well. And now I have a real smooth, real precise cut around three corners of this airlock. Um, we can go ahead and hit 
the floor as well. Now I've moved, now I've got to line it up. We can try and do the floor as well, but in fact, I like to do the floor um, inside the airlock cabin itself. And in fact, this gets me to the biggest problem with airlocks on these macro classes, which is that they're very inconsistent. And by inconsistent, I mean they behave differently on different chips. So the one thing that is consistent is that you melt this floor, um, and this actually detaches this bottom nanocarbon panel beneath the airlock. And as my experience is this is always consistent. What is not consistent now is that I've separated this outer nanocarbon panel from the inner hull, right? So I've separated the outer hull to the inner hull. If you do this in the other ones, right? If you cut these two cut points, and there's none above, but if I cut these two cut points, you know, this, this panel right next to it, it flies off, right? You can just fly the entire thing to the processor easy peasy. Um, so if this section behaves like every other section, that, then now that I've separated the inner hull from the outer hull, I should just be able to fly this to the processor. And my experience is that this works sometimes. Uh, sometimes you have to give it some upward uh, thrust. So here's one where I had to, so that separated it, but for whatever reason, I'm not, I'm not sure what this is caught on. I don't think it's actually caught on anything. So I don't know if this is intended or maybe it's squeezed between these two other sections, right? But this piece is free now, it can move, but it's just not coming. I can try and pull it out and, it, and, and you can see it feels like it's caught down here, but I, I, I don't know what it would be caught on here because there's nothing for it to pivot around. Um, the other thing that's weird and inconsistent is sometimes this airlock panel is attached to one of the panels on either side of it. Typically this rear panel, um, and believe it or not, I don't know how this makes any sense. But my experience is, this could be wrong, this is just my observation, is that if the panel right behind this airlock panel has an cell on it, so here we have an cell, then an empty panel, then the airlock. My experience is in this configuration, this airlock can come up and sometimes it comes out and sometimes it needs to be pushed around, needs to be pushed upward. Um, but when the nacelle is right next to it, so we have nacelle and an airlock, for whatever reason, that causes these two nanocarbon panels to be kind of fixed together, so that they move as one unit. Um, and I can't explain why that happens, right? There's no titanium panels connecting them, there's no cut points, there, you know. So I don't know if this is an oversight by the developers or, or by design, and I just don't understand the design or what. But the nice thing is, is that to deal with these situations, you do the same thing regardless, which is that when, you're, when you want to get this nanocarbon, uh, this, this airlock nanocarbon to the processor, you just want to do it with the panel next to it. So if I go in and I cut this connection point, right, just like I would do normally in the ship, this panel should now, there's only the two right, yep, this panel should now be free. Um, that's interesting. There we go. This panel's free. I didn't cut this cut point, so I'm not sure. It's an early access game, folks. I don't think I cut that. If I can, it's titanium. I don't think I can cut it. But anyway, so this panel is now free, and now our airlock panel has got a lot of room to wiggle. So now we can just fly it straight in. You'll notice, you know, this inner airlock wall is aluminum. If you're being really precise and you want to get 100% completion, you couldn't do the strategy I just described. You'd want to kind of wiggle straight up to the wall and cut it as close as you can uh, while preserving all the aluminum possible. But the reality is that this aluminum is super cheap uh, in terms of cost. So in my mind, it's just not worth it to ever try and save aluminum. Um, unless you're trying to be a completionist. So, this is the mackerel airlock again. Got the, the, the two sides of ceiling, I melt the floor. Um, again, the airlock's inconsistent enough. I can't really tell if the floor is attached here or if it's not attached. Something we'll have to reinvestigate later, I guess. Um, or just use this procedure in general. The other airlock I wanna talk about is on the class four ship. So the class four, class four and five, the geckos. Um, 
go ahead and pull one of these up. The airlock is a different configuration, so you can't use the same strategy, but you can do something very similar. So, uh, these geckos spawn with one or two airlocks. It looks like this one just spawned with one. Um, and to deal with these airlocks, again, airlock similar strategy, you want to get access to the crawl space between the inner and outer hull. So here we started out depressurized, the whole thing's unpressurized, or this main cabin, I should say, is unpressurized. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into this crawl space. Now here, when you're dealing with, uh, when you're processing these gecko ships, you get into this crawl space and you start cutting all these cut points. You can see my other videos if you want to see an example of how to do this. You cut all these cut points and this starts releasing these outer hull segments. And in particular, uh, we've got the same problem here again where uh, these outer nanocarbon panels, the outer hull, is attached to uh, the inner hull by this by this airlock, which is what I'm, you know, what we're looking at right now. These inner, uh, uh, inner aluminum panels. If you look through the rest of the the structure, right, the rest of the crawl space, this isn't true anywhere else. So we want to cut these four panels, and again, I use my trick. I would line myself up nice and square, and I'll do it at full speed now because I've explained the trick. Hold down the brake, and when you hold down the brake, this allows you to make really quick, precise cuts. Uh, how precise and how quick, right? Well, this is, you know, if you're trying to speed run, I think this is a strategy you ought to use. So we cut, we cut inner front and back wall, and then left and right wall. And now uh, the airlock is separated. It's a little sloppier here, but still pretty good. This uh, this airlock control panel is not structural, it's not going to attach anything. I'm in free play, so I've got the highest level split saw upgrade, and I accidentally just cut a little too far. Normally that's not a problem. But now, um, this airlock is, uh, the airlock aluminum has separated the inner hull from the outer hull. So then we can go ahead and process this section like normal. I don't remember, in fact, I always cut all the interior cut points. I think we've got to cut uh, something on the interior here before that panel is, is free to move. It's this one. It's moving now. Oops. Nope. Uh, so there's another cut point here somewhere. Anyway, we cut enough of these cut points and again, uh, this should start moving. I'm not sure which one I've missed. But anyway, this is, not a, this is not a video about how to dissect these ships. This is a video of how to take care of this. Might be the keel section. Oops. Not yet. Okay. Nope. Oh, uh, well. I'm a little baffled now. Normally, like I said, I go through and I cut all the cut points before I do any of the exterior panels. I don't normally do it this way. This is loose. Is it not loose? Oh, okay. There we go. So that one cut point attached the keel to the that side of the hull, right? And then the keel attached to my nanocarbon panels. Anyway, so normally again, the way I would do this is I would come up into the inner crawl space uh, and I would fly through and I would do all these cut points and then while I'm doing the cut points, I would just stop and I would uh, I would do these cuts and free the airlock. And then I would go outside later and free the airlock later. Anyway, I hope you found this instructive. I hope now you, you know everything about airlocks that I know. Uh, so I hope this is useful for you. And uh, let me know what you think. Thanks.